guys i hope you're doing really well today i wanted to share with you a little food photography tutorial more specifically in this tutorial i will be sharing with you three retouching tools that i use almost all the time after i uh, do the first editing of my images these tools are very useful in removing unwanted things in images such as you know those extra little crumbs that you don't really want to appear in your photos or even removing air bubbles that might have formed after the baking of a cake, a banana bread, or even muffins. So if those things sound interesting to you, make sure to watch the video from the beginning to the end. The first tool that I want to share with you guys that I use to retouch my photos is the Spot Healing Brush Tool. This tool is located right here. It's a little band-aid with a little dotted um, half circle around it. And I use this tool to remove marks and blemishes on my pictures. So you can kind of think of it as an eraser for imperfections. I tend to use this tool mainly to erase crumbs or when I have holes in certain cakes, it's super, super useful. So for example, in this case, in this photo, I find there's a little bit too much crumbs and I want to get rid of them. So one of the crumbs that I find is very distractive is this one right here. I find it's a little bit too big. So first thing I will do is adjust the size of my brush. I like to work more with a smaller size. I will also zoom in a little bit to make sure I'm super precise and I will just simply paint over it. And here you go, it's disappeared. I find there's too much of a dark spot here. So again, I will paint over that until I get the exact result that I'm looking for. And look, the crumb is gone. Another one that I find distracting right here is this one over here. It's very small, but annoying. <laughs> so I could just again paint over it with a smaller brush until it goes away. Here. I find there's still a little bit of a halo effect around it, so I can just go back a couple of times to make sure that it really blends in and it doesn't attract attention. I think that's pretty good. And then I find there's still a little bit too much crumbs in front of the cake and under it. This one I find way too big. So I'll just erase it. Sometimes you might have to go a couple of times over some things to make sure that they blend in well, but you know, it shouldn't take you more than three or four attempts. A couple of extra ones. You know, in food photography, you want to have a little bit of an imperfect look to your pictures, but sometimes when there's a little bit too much crumbs, it's also a bit distracting from what is really happening. So I find this, this tool is particularly useful to really make sure that my photo is perfectly imperfect while still not being too messy. And here you go, guys. This is the final image. And I'm pretty happy with it. I find it's, you know, there's a little bit of crumbs here and there, but it's not too, too much. So let's move to our second image. In this image, I'm going to use a different tool to get rid of this little line right here. I'm going to use the patch tool. And the patch tool is a tool that is very, very useful because what it does is that it allows you to repair a selected area with pixels or information from another area. I know it might sound a little bit scientific and complex, but this tool is very simple to understand. I'll show you exactly how I use it in just a second. First, one of uh, the most common times that I use this tool is in cases like this one, when I have a backdrop that is laying flat on my shooting surface and a backdrop that is standing upward in my shooting area. When I place my backdrops in this way, what often happens is that there's a line that is created in my photo. Usually what I could do to hide that line is to place other elements, like in this case I could have maybe a napkin or a glass of milk or something else in the back to kind of hide this line. But I wanted this image to be very simple and open and to have a lot of breathing space. So I am stuck with this little line. I can use the patch tool to fix it quite simply. All I have to do is select the patch tool and then simply circle that line carefully. From here, all I have to do is click on this selection and basically move it to the area that I want to clone. So I can move it upwards here, 
because this area has a lot less information, there's no line or anything. And you can see that line has basically disappeared. Again, there's a little part here that was not very well repaired. So I can do the same thing, just move it to the area next to it or above. Here you go. That line has completely disappeared, it's completely blurred out, and it looks really good. It doesn't even look like I had a line a few seconds ago. So this little tool is very useful, and I have to say I use it quite often, especially in cases like this one. One last thing to remember about it is try to keep your diffusion, which is located right here between 5 or 7, to ensure that you have the softest and the more homogeneous blending effect. Let's move to our third image where I'm going to use the third and final retouching tool that I use often to do my retouching and that tool is the clone stamp tool right here. This tool is very useful because it allows you to basically take one part of an image and copy it somewhere else. One of the most common ways that I use this tool is when I want to add more crumbs in a photo or when I want to duplicate certain elements. For example, in this photo, let's say there's not enough crumbs right here in the photo. What I can do is that I can basically click the option on my keyboard and then I go around a couple of crumbs on, on the image that I like. I release the option and then I can basically paint those crumbs in another part of my image. Here they are in a different spot. Again, I find that you can see a little bit of the outline and the fact that the backdrop is not exactly the same color. You can go back to the tool I shared with you first, the spot healing brush tool, and just make those little crumbs blend in a little bit better. There you go. Here. Another thing that could be really fun in this image is, you know, let's say I look at this photo and I find I don't have a cookie right in this area, it'd be fun to have an extra cookie here. Well, the clone stamp tool can allow us to add a cookie right here without actually having placed one before shooting. So I would select again the clone stamp tool, I would click option on my keyboard and select this cookie. I just basically paint over it and then I go to the area where I would want this cookie to be placed and I simply paint the cookie into reality. There it is. With the shadow and everything. Here's an extra cookie on my photo. You might think, well Muriel, you can pretty much tell that it's the same cookie. It's true because there's the exact same little big crack, should I say, on that cookie. There's that little part that is sticking out. And so in order to make it look more different, again we can go back to the spot healing brush tool to remove some of the things from that cookie that make it look exactly like the other one. So we'll just zoom into our image, select the spot healing brush, and then we can brush over the big crack and make it disappear. Ta-da! Let's try to change the shape of the cookie a little bit, make it more uniform. There you go. The cookie doesn't look exactly the same. And another thing that you can do is basically add more crumbs. So we'll go back to the clone stamp tool. Click option, select some crumbs. Add those crumbs right here. And then again, here we find I find that the you can tell that it's been cloned. So we can remove some of them with the spot healing brush. Let's remove the big chunks because those are the ones that are the most obvious. And then go back one last time to the clone stamp tool and select crumbs that are in another part of the image. So for example, right here, click option. Yeah. More crumbs. There you go. Another cookie, more crumbs, and it wasn't like this at the beginning. Final thing in this image that I noticed that I is kind of bothering me a little bit is this line here. It's actually a shadow from my tripod. I will use again the spot healing brush tool because as we remember, it basically erases imperfections. We'll make it a little bit bigger and then we'll simply paint over that shadow. It's gone. There you go. The image is complete. 
so that's it you guys i hope you enjoyed this little video and learned a thing or two if ever you did make sure to like it uh, share subscribe to this channel if you are interested in more content like this and uh, i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day